Hey guys and ladies, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got an early impression video on a fragrance that was very kindly sent to me by one of you, Armando. Thank you very much. Uh, very, very generous decant. I think this is something like five mils. Um, and I wore it to bed last night and I had a chance to wear it today as my scent of the day. I've had it on my skin now for nine hours. Uh, this is a nine hour dry down and you can still really smell the base and this is about four hours. So um, re-experience the opening. I've now experienced the opening three times, but I still call these videos early impressions because obviously you're not gonna know it as well as somebody who, you know, wore an entire bottle of it or something like that. But this is Roja's Taif Oud is what we're gonna talk about today. But before we get into this, we are going to do a very quick unboxing. Uh, this should not be very long. Uh, it's only one perfume in here. And I got this for a fantastic price, especially since it's a discontinued fragrancy. The thing is, is um, if whenever you buy discontinued perfume, sometimes if you go for the ones that are really, really hyped, you're going to pay a huge markup, almost like a giant finder's fee. A uh, bunch of bags as padding. And... I like, sometimes I just like blind buying discontinued fragrances when I get them for a good deal. Um, just because I've been very lucky with discontinued vintage fragrances from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, I've had really good success, even with the ones no one talks about. If I just find one, you know, from a house I know, and, um, and... Even if they're not hyped on YouTube, even if my vintage fragrance friends aren't talking about it, sometimes I'll just go for it and see, especially if the price is right. And the price was more than right here. This was $12. Um, seems authentic. Uh, hopefully it was well stored. There's no box. There's only the um, only this little bottle. And this is a little bottle. It's a 30, 24 mil, okay? But still $12. Uh, so this is Pierre Cardin. Centaur, and this is the blue version. The bottle looks like it's seen better days. You know, there's some cuts in the in in scratches. Uh, let me show you what I got the other day. I got a 50 mil bottle of this for 20 bucks. So actually, this is probably the better deal. And this is the black version. And I looked this up the other day, uh, and let me just pull it up, and I'll just tell you the notes because I wore that to bed. And let me tell you something, this is a stunner. No one talks about this uh, line. And actually, I would have been, I would have been included in that nobody except for Armando of uh, Taif Aoud fame and also Crazy Unboxings. Uh, he is uh, turning into a best friend of the channel. He pointed out that this line is really good and no one talks about it. And so anytime I get feedback like that from someone that I trust, I, I do listen. I take it to heart. And so Pierre Cardin Centaur, let me just tell you what this is listed as. It's listed as uh, Diamant Noir, Pierre Cardin Diamant Noir. And there's only four notes listed in Parfumo, Oak Moss, Green Notes, which could be uh, galbanum. It smells a little bit maybe like uh, some Artemisia from the 80s or something like that. Woods and citruses. It seems like a very simple fragrance, but it's beautiful. I put it on probably like 9 or 10 o'clock a couple nights ago when I got the bottle, and uh, my wife smelled it and said, I really like that. What is that? And I said, it's a vintage fragrance, and usually actually she likes vintage fragrances, crazy enough, but she does. And... Um, when I woke up in the morning, I could still smell it clear as day. I mean, just a beautiful, high quality fragrance. I have no clue who the perfumer is. Uh, I have no clue about anything other than my initial impression was grand. I loved it. And um, so this is a fragrance that, let me see if I can find the note listing on. This is called Queer uh, Kasak, C-A-S-A-Q-U-E, Queer Kasak. And I was worried it was actually going to be like a marine fragrance. It's not. It's a leather. It's a queer. Um, 
and it is bergamot, grass, lavender, frankincense, clove, jasmine, labdanum, nutmeg, patchouli, sandalwood, styrax, vanilla, and Virginian cedar. Sounds like a fantastic note breakdown to me. Um, so, two down, and there's probably five or six more to collect, and I got both of these for $32. I mean, that's my kind of deal. Would I love them all to line up and be exactly the same? Sure, but, uh, you know, I'll just pick these off as good deals come out, and I'm very, very happy with this. So hopefully I'll be very happy with this. And videos to come, and there's no videos on YouTube. There's like one uh, video. Very few people talk about these. I guess they just kind of went by the wayside. You know, they're one of those lost to history. No one thinks they're any good, but they are. They seem to be really, really good. So I'm excited. Uh, excited to get to uh, know Queer Kasak and to get to know that uh, we'll just call it Centaur Black and Centaur Blue for now. Uh, and so videos on this will come, but this is the kind of stuff that I go for as a vintage lover. Sometimes I just like hunting down these rare, obscure pieces, and if the price is right, you know, uh, because what's funny is, um, there are some from this line, just a couple, but there are some where I already see people trying to sell them for 150 160 180 uh, so the, the scalpers are kind of, uh, you know, they're, they're already trying to, uh, take advantage, let's say. So when I find good deals, I grab them and I'll just leave the scalpers be, see if they can sell it to somebody else. Okay. So let's talk a bit, a bit about, uh, Roja Dove Taif Oud. Now, first of all, this fragrance is a little confusing because if you look, it's a Fortnum and Mason exclusive, and there actually is a Fortnum and Mason perfume. Uh, it's listed in Parfumo as FM the perfume, but it's Fortnum and Mason the perfume. And I will do a full review on this video on this fragrance very soon. This is uh, probably if you said Ramsey, you get to pick one full bottle of Roja that you do not have in your collection. This would probably be the one that I would go for, this Fortnum and Mason. Uh, now, the, the Fortnum and, and Mason FM, the perfume, came out in 2018. So you would think that Roja Dove Fortnum and Mason Taif Oud would be like a flanker of this, right? It's not. This actually came out in 2014, and it was a Fortnum and Mason, Mason exclusive. And then they released this one, the one that just is called Fortnum and Mason, uh, in 2018. So it kind of went backwards to how you would expect it. Um, and so I actually have heard about this fragrance before because I have a, a YouTube friend, a friend in general, I would say now, that has been on the channel. We did a live stream together. You guys probably know him. He started a beautiful channel recently, Jonathan1970. And he spoke very highly about this. He said, uh, this is one of the best Rojas that no one talks about. And so when I got this decant, I was like, yes, I can finally get to know it and understand it. Um, so let me read you the note listing and let's talk about what I get from it and, and my prognosis of the fragrance and, and how it's been wearing it today as my scent of the day. So here's the note listing. Aldehydes, bergamot in the top. That's it. Heart is clove, jasmine from grass, geranium, may rose, black currant, and ylang ylang. Base is oud, patchouli, vanilla, benzoin, frankincense, labdanum, and musk. And I actually like to try to wear my fragrances before I read the note listing. So what I did this yesterday, uh, last night, and this morning is I, you know, obviously I wore it to bed last night, and then this morning I uh, sprayed it on again as my scent of the day after my shower, and I made notes, and I always take notes when I do my, uh, when I do my fragrance, even these early impressions, I like to write things down, and the very first thing that popped in my head, as soon as this hit my skin, it was a huge blast of Cipriol, gigantic Cipriol, Actually, Cipriol is the main note for the first five minutes. There's no doubt about it in my mind. I am 100% positive. I would bet big money 
uh, to little money that there is Cipriol, a Cipriol dominant opening to this fragrance. And I'm very familiar with Cipriol. Um, I actually really like Cipriol. I did an entire, this is not a top 10 on Cipriol or the note of Nagamatha. They're basically different ways of saying basically the same thing. Uh, but there's Cipriol in fragrances like uh, this little gem, Promise, by Dominique Ropion for Frederick Mall, which I really, really like. Um, this is one of my favorite Arabic style perfumes. Huge fragrance, but it's a big, big Cipriol fragrance. One of the best examples of Cipriol. There's a couple other really good examples of Cipriol that Amouage has done. One is called uh, Opus 6 which I'm very glad to have this older 100 mil bottle of, of Opus 6. Um, this is a creation by two brilliant perfumers. Uh, I think it is Pia Negrin and Alberto Morias, if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on that, but I think that is correct. Um, and this is Bay Leafs, Pepper, Frankincense, Silk Vine, Nagamatha, which is the Cipriol, Patchouli, Amber, Ambronum, Gum Rock Rose, Sandalwood, and Z11. And the this is kind of like uh, Amouage's take on trying to make a spicy oriental oud fragrance, but not use any oud. You notice there's no oud in the note listing. This came out in 2012. This came out a couple years before this um, Taif oud that Roja put out. And the newest one, and probably the one where I would say the Cipriol is the closest to the way that the Cipriol is used in Taif Oud, is called Silver Oud by Amouage. And uh, this is what their newer presentations look like, which I really do not like. Uh, I'm not a fan of this presentation at all. Uh, I do like the bottle, but I honestly should have got the older 50 mil bottle. It's my fault. Uh, but I did. I went for the 100 mil. I got a great deal on this, so I can't say no. It's retail is 500 bucks, which is nuts. Uh, I think I ended up getting like 150 off and free shipping and no tax and stuff like that. But um, this, the way that the Cipriol is used in this is the closest that I've smelled to the Cipriol in Taif Oud. And when it opens up, it's extremely earthy. And... Um, you get a huge blast of Cipriol. It is, it is, um, anyone who knows, I would say anything about the difference between Cipriol and Oud is instantly going to pick that out. It, and, and there's no Cipriol in the note listing. Uh, and so, which is a little bit surprising because, I mean, it is a big Cipriol opening for the first couple minutes, maybe even five minutes, I would say. It just really dominates uh, it's earthy, it's woody, uh, it's slightly, I would say, almost like you burned wood and then put the wood out and, um, you know, the, the, it's no longer smoking. There's no, uh, it doesn't have that current smoke, but you could tell at some point that it was burnt, right? Uh, it's got that charred like effect, but very earthy when you first spray. And this is, like I said, about a four hour dry down. So I don't have the opening right here. But from memory, that uh, earthy Cipriol probably, you know, if it's 2014 and you're in Fortnum and Mason or you're in Fortnum and Mason now, apparently this is still available, still being sold. And you sprayed this and you didn't know what oud smelled like, you would probably say, wow, that's oud. That has to be what oud is. That's, that's, that's what oud smells like. It must be because it has that little bit of funk, a little bit of animalic um, opening. And what ends up happening is about five minutes in, the Cipriol slowly begins to recede and take a, it doesn't really take a back seat, but it allows, I would say, more ingredients to come join the party, okay? So originally that Cipriol is front and center. And then probably in that three to five minutes in to the equation, the aldehydes and the bergamot start to come in. And you can almost smell, if you're if you're reading the note listing and you spray this on, uh, you're gonna look and you're gonna say, where are the aldehydes in bergamot? I'm not getting any of them in the, in the first five minutes or so. Uh, and if you just be a little patient, they will come join the party. But what's interesting is the, the Cipriol never really fully recedes. It doesn't 
completely take a back seat. It just allows these other notes to, to come to the forefront. And so I think what's happening, my uh, prognosis of this, if you will, is here's what I think what's happening here, is I think that Roja and the perfumer kind of got together and they tried to trick people, is what it is. It's basically a trick. Um, they're trying to trick people into thinking that they're smelling some exotic, high-priced oud. And they're doing it with some sort of a... Um, mixture of cypriol and labdanum and stuff like that uh now i interestingly enough i don't have a problem with that because i actually really love cypriol it's it's an amazing note um it's it's a note that doesn't put me off uh and i i enjoy the way that it 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 works in a fragrance it um it it's not a turnoff for me uh and but i but i do think that anybody who has kind of got their nose on a lot of fragrances would instantly recognize that Cipriol. When I, before I looked at the note listing and I made my notes, it was Cipriol in the opening, 100%. And, and so yesterday, interestingly enough, um, I'm going to take a little bit of a side journey here. We're going to wind our way back to this Taif Oud here in just a second. But yesterday, if you follow my channel and you watch all my videos, and I understand that these individual reviews or these individual fragrance videos that I put up don't get as many clicks. Not many people, uh, not probably a third of the people click on the videos and watch compared to the list videos that I do. Perfumers portfolio, you know, this is not a top 10, this year in perfume, they get way more views. But I still think these videos are very important to do because it's a frame of reference for somebody who wants to come back. You know, if, if somebody searches Roja Dove, Fortnerman, Mason, Taif Food. I'm hoping that this video will come up and, and help that person. Um, because it seems like reviewing individual fragrances is kind of turning into a little bit of a lost art. You know what I mean? People are going, they're just looking, they're going for the views, they're only doing the live streams, they're only doing lists. <laughs> and I want to continue to do these videos, even though they don't get the views, I, I don't really care. Uh, but yesterday I did a review on a very uh, expensive, very hard to find indie fragrance from the house of Ensar Oud called Jungle Kinam. And one thing I forgot to mention, I made a note here, uh, is I completely forgot to mention, interestingly enough, that it plays a little bit into what I'm talking about here with the Cipriol smelling like Oud. Uh, is even in the indie world where you buy an Ensar Oud and you think that uh, you're getting, you buy an Ensar Oud fragrance that's called Jungle Kinam, let's say. You can go watch my video yesterday for reference if you're interested. Uh, but you buy a, a Ensar Oud fragrance called Jungle Kinam. And did you know that whenever the name Kinam comes up in a composition uh, from any of the indie houses that you basically pick right now, they're not using real Kinam Oud, okay? Uh, because it would be so prohibitively expensive to use real Kinam. If you tried to distill uh, real Kinam, uh, and let's say you bought two or three uh, kilos of real Kinam, it would cost you half a million dollars, you know, to make a perfume out of that. So what these, what these houses are doing is that they are... Um, they are giving their perfumers interpretation of what a Kinam fragrance would smell like. And if you go watch my video yesterday, we talked a little bit about what Kinam Oud is, what it is, how it differs from regular Oud. Uh, and so yesterday, if you go, if you go and watch that video, uh, you will notice that I mentioned on the Ensar Oud website, it said there were two types of Oud listed. One was Tiger Wood 1990. The other is Sumatura Zen. Neither are technically Kinam, okay? The fragrance is called Jungle Kinam, right? And this is a similar situation we're running into with Taif Oud. This has, to me, to my nose, I don't know for sure, okay? But to my nose, there's no Taif, there's no Oud, or it doesn't smell like there's Oud to me. Maybe there's a drop of Oud so they can say there's real Oud. I don't know if Roja does that. I've never actually heard Roja say I use real oud, so I don't know. Um, but it's an interesting uh, distinction because I know many people give 
these type of brands like Roja, who sells for, I don't know what this sells for at Fort Norman Mason. My guess is probably somewhere in the three to $700 range, but I honestly don't know what the price is for, it's probably 50 mil bottle is my guess. Um, but you know, Roja has fragrances that retail up to $3,500 for a hundred mil. It's a lot of money, right? Um, and so many people give these type of houses a hard time, but very few people give those indie houses a hard time. Very few people are going to get on to Ensar Oud for not using real Kinam. Um, so this Cipriol labdanum combination to give the impression of oud, uh, the rose de mai geranium combination to give the impression of uh, taif rose, which, you know, uh, I was very lucky and blessed. I will, I should have got it out beforehand, but in one of the vials that Russian Adam sent me was real taif rose oil, the real thing, the, the taif rose auto, very uh, sought after, very rare. I was very lucky to, um, you know, I was very lucky to get to sniff some of those ingredients that he sent me. I actually wore one of them to bed last night, uh, on one wrist and I wore this on the other wrist, uh, when I went to bed and, and, and I wore a, uh, Sri Lankan oud, uh, mixed, uh, distilled in rose oil that Russian Adam did. And it was absolutely beautiful. I loved every second of it. Uh, so I, I've been very blessed with some of the friendships and the people I've met in 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 the industry, and also you know friends that I've just made who are perfume lovers. Uh, and real Taif Rose has this to me extremely lemony, uh, fruity like smell, and it's a very specific smell. It's probably my favorite rose. I, I will admit it's a very rare and expensive rose. It only blooms in Saudi Arabia one month of the year. It's a huge celebration. You can look up the, uh, it's very close to Mecca, I believe, but it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's an amazing rose. I, 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 I adore it. I love it. It doesn't smell like there's any real taif in here, uh, to me. And, but the thing about it is there are ingredients that are hinting at taif rose and there are ingredients that, um, that they list on the label that I don't necessarily smell. There's ingredients that I smell that are not listed, right? I mentioned the uh, Cipriol. And um, what, what happens with the fragrance is basically the, once it gets into the late dry down. So on this hand, again, I have the, I have the dry down. It's about nine hours now. I put it on at eight. It's almost five uh, in, in, the, in the afternoon. And so this late dry down, what ends up happening, interestingly enough, is after it gets, after that aldehydic rose comes to the forefront and after the fruity black currant and the floral heart kind of starts to dissipate, it dries into this fragrance, into this smell that starts to smell like uh, castorium. It starts to give off this vintage castorium vibe. So this fragrance is a little bit of an enigma, no pun intended to... Um, no pun intended to uh, Roja Dove's Enigma Enigma fragrance, but it does. It smells like a little bit of an enigma to me because there are things on here that I don't that I don't get in the fragrance that are literally listed on the label. You would think a fragrance that has says Taif Oud has Taif Rose and Oud in it, and I don't really get either here. Uh, but to be fair, Frederick Mall put out a fragrance called Rose and Queer that technically has no rose, it's geranium, and some people say it has no queer. I do get a little bit of a leather accord in that, but I love that fragrance, right? So even though I may be bashing the process, okay, that, that they went through to get here, uh, I like the fragrance, if that makes sense. So, you know, you could pick this apart, you could put your perfume nerd hat on and really dissect this like I just did and pick it apart and say uh, it smells like Cipriol in the opening, not Oud. The clove, I will say one thing that really stood out. So uh, about 10 minutes in, okay, five minutes, five minutes or so is where I said the earthy Cipriol dominates when you first spray. Then you start to get some of that aldehydic bergamot. 10 to 15 minutes in, uh, you start to notice this spicy element come to the forefront, and that spice is clove. 
And what's interesting is clove is a very, um, it's a very strong note and it can be very dominant if you're not very careful. Roja made a career. Many of his fragrances outside of Diaghilev are uh, blended in a way where nothing is supposed to be animalic or challenging. Uh, everything is supposed to be just super elegant, super smooth, super posh. You know, it's supposed to have this um, bourgeoisie, this upper class, this upper crust, this, uh, you know, it's supposed to have that feel to their to to the fragrances uh if there's animalics it's usually dosed just enough you know like the animalics in danger which smell like heritage i guarantee but uh the animalics in danger are there just to give a little pinch of interesting the cumin is there just to give a little distinction right everything is always intelligently dosed everything is bourgeois high class bourgeoisie high class you know this uh smooth there's supposed to be uh, no sharp edges, everything totally rounded, uh, and it's it's that kind of perfume is usually what Roja Dove puts out. And sometimes it does just smell so expensive and posh and, and beautiful and all that stuff, and, and many times it does. What's interesting with Taif Oud that I really like is um, there are three ingredients, in, one in each level of the fragrance, that stick out to me. The top has that cypriol. Even though it's not listed, it's strong, it's earthy, uh, it's dank, it's dark. It's, um, you know, it's got that rooty, earthy, woodiness to it. And it's sharp and it's in your face. And probably that's what people think smells like oud. But like I said, that's cypriol to me in the top. In the mid, the clove stands out. And the clove reminds me of a clove fragrance from... Of, from the old days, from the vintage days. It reminds me of fragrances like uh, the clove you'll smell in something like Aramis JHL, or the clove you'll smell in Giacomo de Giacomo, or the clove you'll smell in Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Homme, or the clove you'll smell in Opium, you know, something like that. That's the type of clove I'm talking about here, vintage, sharp clove. Um, and uh, it you you will get it if you look for it, You'll get that clove. I just got some just now, four hours in. I just got some. Uh, and it is blended with this fl this floral heart. Now, usually Taif Rose has this lemony quality to it. If you look at a picture of a Taif Rose, you'll notice that it has, um, in the center of, of the petals, you'll notice there are these little yellow protruding um, pieces that kind of come out of the middle. Those yellow, uh, you know, parts of the flower are what I think a good visual representation of what the flower smells like. Usually the petals are light pink in color, uh, and it's somewhat fruity and very lemony. And um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the way that Taif Rose smells. I don't get that. I get clove with a touch of rose and geranium and maybe the yellowy, custardy, um, banana-like ylang lang is supposed to give it that yellow feel, but it doesn't happen in my mind that way. I don't, I don't associate that with Taif Rose. Um, but I do get the black currant. I get the fruity black currant, and, it, and that is a beautiful part of the fragrance. In fact, most of this fragrance, the majority of the composition, the heart, is the uh, aldehydic, floral, fruity part with the spicy clove. The sharpness at the top with the Cypriol, even though it kind of blends into the rest of the fragrance, it never really disappears. I think it stays, you know, the Cypriol lasts. It's a long lasting note. That's why many of these houses have turned to Cypriol to replace Oud. Number one, it's way cheaper. Uh, if you look at this line, just as an example, this Frederick Malls Desert Gems line uh, they sell the night for over a thousand dollars. They sell dawn for six, seven, eight hundred bucks, depending on the size of the bottle. Uh, they sell the moon for the same price as dawn, six, seven, eight hundred bucks, and this sells for three hundred or three fifty or whatever it is, um, four hundred. I don't know, but it's substantially less. And they, in in Frederick Mall is completely open about it. They don't say the Cipriol in here is oud. They say it's Cipriol, and they sell. They can sell this for for substantially less than the ones that they claim have real oud in it. Oud is a prohibitively expensive ingredient. 
uh, in and of itself when using the real thing on such a large scale. And so um, what's interesting, what's so interesting about the fragrance to me is that each portion has that part that jumps out and I, and I enjoy it and I like it, even though it is not what it says, even though it's not what it says on the box, on the bottle, on the pamphlet, on the presentation, you know, even though it's not the way Roja is putting this fragrance out, which I think is slightly dishonest, which is not uncommon in the fragrance world at all. The fragrance world is filled with dishonesty. Uh, I still enjoy it. I still like it. I, I like the fragrance. I, I truly enjoy the composition and the dry down turns into this um, slightly musky, um, little bit of frankincense, but I get a lot of labdanum and, um, this castorium-like smell that also feels vintage. So I said the clove smells like a clove you would smell in Van Cleef and Arpel's Pour from 1978 or opium from the 70s or, you know, it's that kind of clove note, right? The castorium in the dry down also feels very vintage. And it's, it's just, it's a very intriguing fragrance to me because it does so many things that you, you don't expect. Like you expect to get what's said on, what's written on the bottle and you don't. And then you get things that are not listed, but you like them. Um, and so it's, it's like, there's this, uh, whirlwind of emotions wearing this. Uh, I was... Very shocked Cipriol is not listed as a note. Again, I know I've said that a lot, but uh, it doesn't take away from the fact that it has that Roja posh elegance to it, but it has facets that keep a fraghead like me interested, okay? Would I pay $400 for this? Would I give Roja $400 retail or whatever it is? Let's see if I can look up what it is. Just curiosity. Um, Roja Taif Oud. Can I buy it? They have Taif Oud scented candles for 125 pounds in stock at Roja Parfums. Uh, they have hair mist in stock. Fortnumandmason.com. Okay, here we go. Oh, the price. Oh, that hurts. So, a bottle of this... Now, to be fair, it is a hundred. Okay, never mind. It's not. A, I was about to say. To be fair, it's a hundred mil. Fifty mils is uh, three hundred and ninety-five pounds, which works out to about five hundred and seventy-two dollars. I think. Let me just run the calculation here. Can I change it to dollars? I'm gonna have to do pounds to dollars. Pounds to dollars. So this is four hundred seventy-six dollars for fifty mil. Uh, a hundred mil is seven hundred and ninety dollars. Ouch, that's nine hundred and fifty two dollars for hundred mils of this. That is more than the Ensar fragrance I wore yesterday by a substantial amount. I, I would much rather get that Ensar fragrance, uh, Kin Jungle Kinam than this to be honest with you if we start and that's the problem that's you can take this hobby literally as shallow or as deep as you want because i know i'm kind of crossing genres here the people who like roja probably won't like ensar uh the people who like ensar probably laugh that people are spending this much money on a roja because they call this synthetic you know just m chemical molecules from the big oil houses whereas they're getting real oud, uh, which they are. I mean, Ensar, Aris Ladore, Russian Adam, Bortnikov, uh, even houses like Meleg and uh, Peter Carter from uh, Centauri Perfumes, they use real oud, real oud, not, not a oud accord, which you're getting here. You're getting an oud accord in uh, Taif oud. And uh, I'm not ashamed to say I still like it. I mean, uh, just to give you guys some color on this, my wife's favorite fragrance on me is Tom Ford Oud Wood. She's like, why do you have all this? Just wear Oud Wood. That's what I like on you. And part of me inside snickers. And the other part is like, you like what you like, right? Um, and, and so I'm not ashamed to say I like this, but I am versed enough in real Oud to know that 
you're kind of being taken for a ride here, but art is subjective. Uh, and, and that's the thing. I recently noticed that on board, on, uh, uh, Roja Dove's website, there's no longer, uh, this is no longer on his website. It's, I think it's officially discontinued here. This, this is no longer on the website. You, you can't get Great Britain anymore. It's, it's gone. It's off the website. Uh, so the thousand dollars that I paid for this, and I think it retails for two, I think I paid like 800 bucks. The $800 that I paid for this, is it worth it to me to have this? This is one of my favorite leather fragrances, Great Britain. It's a uh, Roja's take on a Russian leather. Um, I think it smells like a mixture of, you know, Queer de Russie and maybe Queer Canage by Dior. I think this is a better version of Dior's Queer Canage. But is it worth $800 or 1000 bucks To me, yes, because I've come that far in loving leathers that I don't want to be without this. And if this is discontinued, would I pay 1500, 1800, two grand? How, how high would you go? You know, cost is all subjective because if you ver view perfume as art, how far are you willing to go? You know, and that's the question. Um, for this, not that far, <laughs> not what they're asking. You know, if I could score a 50 mil bottle for hundred bucks, 150. Yeah. I'd probably grab it for sure. But 475 for 50 mil. No, not right now. Not, not where I'm at in my journey, uh, right now. And that's the thing is that everyone is in different spots in their journey, but I wanted to make, I, I want to continue to make videos like this because I'm sure that there's very few people that are um, going that deep, you know, thinking about that many variables and then putting it out there, putting themselves out there. Uh, and you know, when you put yourself out there on the internet, there's not 99.9% .9 of you are, are absolutely amazing, but there's always that 0.1% that, uh, they'll, they'll comment and say something stupid and I'll just have to talk shit to them and block them. Cause I don't want you guys to see the comments. Um, but you know, it's, uh, that's, it's, 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 it's as a hobby, as an art form, as something that we love, it's all, this is all subjective. And with where I'm at in my journey and what I've smelled, that's my honest assessment of Roja's Taif food. Um, and so if you guys have experience with this and you can see, I've put a pretty decent sized dent in this five ML decant. Um, so if you have experience with this, I would love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know if you agree or disagree with me, um, you know, it, it, it does look like it's still available directly from the Fortnum and Mason website. Uh, it says just interestingly enough, let's see what, what it says on the breakdown. British master perfumer Roja Parfums has created this very special perfume exclusively for Fortnum and Mason. The fragrance is constructed around the rose, the emblem of England, as a nod to the regal approval of our store since its opening in 1707. Regal approval. This rich, soft, and sparkling fragrance, I wouldn't call it soft. Uh, rich, soft, and sparkling fragrance opens with bergamot developing into a warm heart around the fragrant Taif Rose of Saudi Arabia. Jasmine, Lang Ylang, Geranium, Cassis, and Clove. There is a little bit, now that they mention Cassis, there is a little bit of this um, pissy, like, uh, animalic pissy vibe, which I thought was coming from the Cipriol, but very well could be Cassis mixing with the Clove. That, that makes a lot of sense. The lingering base notes encompass patchouli, oud, and sensual vanilla. So I think the Cassis was one of the missing... Uh, notes that I did not talk about because I didn't know there was cassis in there, but now that they mention it, I, I could totally see it as a possibility. Um, so that's kind of a good, I think that's a very fair initial impression. Obviously not a full review, but we're at 40 minutes. We did do an unboxing. Let me know what you think of the Pierre Cardins, which I am absolutely loving. Let me know what you think of the Roja breakdown. Uh, I love seeing your faces in the comments. I love the support of the community. You guys have been absolutely awesome. I have to give a special shout out and thank you to Armando again for sending this to me. Uh, 
You've really broadened my horizons with the stuff that you sent me. So thank you, my friend. You've been a great friend, and it's been a pleasure chatting with you these uh, last couple of weeks. So cheers, guys. Thanks for watching, and see you again next time. Bye-bye.